Hello, good people. Welcome to the Safe Happy Life channel with me, Dr. Rose M. Um, a guidance and counseling practitioner and uh, a Kenyan by nationality. And uh, I'm going to talk about uh, something that is uh, concerns our children in the country called Kenya. It may be replicated in other places to various degrees in the world, uh, but uh, here we are, based in Kenya. And this is a uh, hope for our children. In a few days' time, our children, go, all of them primary, secondary, and even college students, would be at home for Christmas and New Year festivities. Each will come home with their basket of harvest for the year, some overflowing, others almost empty, yet others uh, with even less than what they went with uh, to school. We need to appreciate one fundamental fact uh, that they will all come home, each to their home and we pray that none deviates. On the day they arrive, please parent, please mom, please dad, spare your child the agony of asking about performance, school fee structures for next term. Unless they volunteer the information, I beg you to spare them the agony of asking about homework, about the shirts, the shoes, the books they lost, and let them settle and drink in home at last feeling. I used to ask about performance because that was the tradition I was raised in. I no longer do. Because over time, I have realized that having my child back home is much more important than the grade they got. That, of course, does not mean that the discussion over the grade is not important, but it is not a priority. Our high schoolers are coming home to a heavily toxic, almost hostile environment. We have collectively condemned them in Kenya as a generation that is indisciplined. What with all the negative publicity about burning schools, torching dormitories, going on the rampage? So remarks or questions such as, did you burn your school again? Or um, you, you people are burning schools, wait until you come out and face the reality of the harsh life out here or you'll still do exams, whether you ban schools or not. We, we expect them to hear these comments right from the time they get out of the school gate. They may hear them from the, the transport uh, systems. They will hear them from the villagers. They will hear them from friends, from relatives, from everybody. And uh, even worse, they have even been condemned by or so to speak, by even senior government officials who have decided, now you're so bad, the only thing that can help you is a pain. Parents, I can assure you that this blanket condemnation will not leave our children unscathed. Kenyans, let us get out of this because the schools that had issues over uh, the last term, or the term that is just ending, were most probably less than 60. And we have over 10,400 schools, secondary schools. Yet, we have put all of them in that basket of condemnation. Today, like always parents, I want us to be the advocate of these children. I want to you to search your memory. Can you remember the last time you heard something positive in the media, both mainstream and social media about our high schoolers? The environment is hostile, but I 
I'm here to ask us as parents that our homes must be oceans of hope for our children and young adults. Hope without expiry dates. I look at hope as a situation where a person knows what they want, how to navigate the path to what they want, and how to be motivated towards achieving what they want. Let us, parents, boost the hope in our teens and young adults at home. Because by the time the dust settles, they cease to be high schoolers collectively, and they become my son, your son, my daughter, your daughter. As they settle into this short vacation, please, I suggest we do the following. One, establish the, with your child their destination or their goal. Ask them what they want to achieve, uh, and they may have several uh, options. What do they want to do? And what do they want to be? And how? Do they want to be or to get there? This is number two. Work on the pathways. You get the goal, uh, and then we get the how pathways to the goal. Uh, for example, a child may say, I want to be tour and travel CEO. Ask what they need to get there so that it is clear to the child uh, as to what they need to become the tour and travel CEO. If you feel that they are not sure, uh, get them somebody to guide them or you guide them yourself if you are in a position to do it. Discuss the options and possibilities available. Let them not dream of being a pilot when the family cannot afford three, four million of, of flying school uh, fees. Talk about careers that do not match their subject choice or capacity. Let us give them hope, uh, real hope in, in careers. Uh, number three, if their goal does not appear practical, ask them for the next best thing that they can do or what possible solutions there may be uh, to resolve the gridlock. For example, if they want to be a pilot and you cannot, as a parent, afford the flying school fees, we get to a gridlock. What, what next? What, what is the next practical thing for the child to do so that they don't leave them at that point of, I can't afford to pay for you flying school fees. And the child is left there now wondering if, if the parent or if mom, if dad cannot afford, what next for me? Number four, reassure your son, reassure your daughter. Children need to feel safe as they venture into the future. There is a lot of hopelessness in the world, and there are lots and lots of naysayers, pessimists out there. Make sure that uh, you reassure your child so that the messages that come from naysayers do not influence them into uh, losing hope. Number five, there is a lot of negative energy and our young adults uh, appear to be taking it in. They say they have gone to school, but they have no jobs. Let us teach them flexibility embedded on the hope that, for example, training as a chef and serving in a hotel as a waiter does not prevent a person from rising from that waiting uh, or waiter to the senior chef that they have always wanted to be. Number six, others have been condemned by the education system because they got a D, D minus. Raise their hope. That is your child, mom. That is your child, dad. Raise his or her hope. Dear parent, remember the video I did on hands and hammer jobs? You may want to go into the playlist and check on it. Because getting a D minus 
does not mean uh, since the child cannot proceed to the university because of the education system, does not mean that there is no hope for that child. Others have even gotten that D minus or that D and gotten opportunities to go out of the country where education system is not as rigid as it is in our country, Kenya. And they have gotten opportunities to do certificates, to do diplomas, higher diplomas, and on and on and on, and even graduated with degrees. Give your child hope. Number seven, my personal view uh, is that uh, life is not about equality or competition, but about personal growth. This should be communicated to our children by us moms, by us dads. Believe in your child. Give him hope. Because if you do not give him hope and they realize you have no hope in them or in him, in her, they also lose hope because they believe that you are wiser, you are older, and therefore, if you do not see any hope, then truly there is no hope. And finally, spice the holiday. This short holiday, it's just about uh, 14 days or so. Spice up the holiday with laughter in the family. Find reasons to laugh together as a family. I hope I have spoken to a person, and uh, if I have, Kindly share. If you have subscribed, thank you very much for your support. And if you have not subscribed, please do so. Give me a thumbs up. Let me get your comments uh, at the, the, the comments section for suggestions, compliments, uh, critique, uh, or, or manner of comments. I will be happy to see your feedback. Thank you very much. God bless you.